Hey, Buns. So today I want to talk about the different ways in which Final Fantasy XIV is better than World of Warcraft. In my last video, I talked about ways that I thought Final Fantasy XIV could maybe take some things from World of Warcraft that I think might be good over there. And so to restore balance in the force, <laughs> we have to now look at the ways that really Final Fantasy XIV is straight up better. First one, obviously, story. Story. The character development is light years better. The writing is much, much, much better. In this game, people do bad things because they have interesting motivations, except Xenos. And they're not just doing bad things because they were corrupted. They touch the green fell. Oh, or they touch the red nightmare, so they're bad now. Oh, or they touch the purple stuff. And now they love the old gods, so they're corrupted. Like, all this corruption, I'm so sick of it. And it's so lazy. It's so boring that somebody got corrupted. And so, oh, now they're bad. That's why they made the bad choices. You know, that's so lame. And it's not interesting. And it just feels like throwing away characters that could have had potential. In Final Fantasy XIV, characters have depth. I'll never forget turning in 20 mistletoe as part of a botanist quest. And the guild instructor said... War is inevitable, this I understand, but by aiding the war effort, we do not merely contribute to the suffering, we profit from it, no better than the parasitic mistletoe, we suck the life out of the trees that shelter us for our own personal gain. This was actually a really beautiful series of quests, not just this one quest, but this was a moment from it that I decided to screenshot. The guild master of Fufucha is wrestling with her sense of ethics regarding, you know, her responsibility as the leader of the botanist guild and her opposition to war her pacifism and these things are coming at odds and she has to decide what moral concessions is she willing to make in the name of the so-called greater good and it's a it's, it's very memorable it's very immersive and i felt so connected to this character and this is just one tiny 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 example of all the depth that Every person you meet in Final Fantasy XIV has. You're part of this world and you're part of the journey that other characters are on as well as your own journey. You are the hero of the story in this game, unlike in World of Warcraft, where you are just kind of like some random schmuck who just happened to be there at the time and who's tagging along with all these much more important heroes. You helped <laughs> in Final Fantasy XIV. It's like you get credit, Shadowbringers has been called one of the best Final Fantasy narratives ever. And that is high praise if you know anything about the Final Fantasy series. So before I continue ranting on this one point, we're only on number one. We need to move on to the next one because I got a lot more, <laughs> but it good, story real good. Okay, next one. It's the dev approach and communication with people. So in the World of Warcraft community, I often sense that there is a aura of hostility between the devs and the players. It's like they're constantly at war, constantly clashing. The devs have their idea of how they want the game to be played, and the players have their idea of how they want to play the game, and it seems like they're just always at odds. World of Warcraft devs have been better at actually talking to the community, but that doesn't mean that they're actually listening. <sighs> To give you a concrete example, just looking forward into Shadowlands, there's the Covenant system. So you pick a Covenant, and the Covenant provides some pretty outfits for you, but the Covenant will also provide its own talent trees. Now, that talent tree might not be good for your class <laughs> or your spec, but what if you still want the pretty glamour from that Covenant? Well, now you're being forced to make a pretty crappy choice between do you want the glamour or do you want to pick a covenant that's going to be better for you and I think this puts players in an unfortunate position there's been a lot of outcry about this but the devs for World of Warcraft have said oh, well you know it's all going to be balanced enough and players aren't going to discriminate on other players because they picked the bad covenant yeah right the devs have said oh well you know just trust us it's going to work fine it's all going to be balanced and it's going to be fine but I don't know. It's just, it just, it feels like there's a, there's a war. There's an argument always. There's always this argument going on between what the players want and how the players want the game to be and how the devs want the game to be. And it's just constant clashing. Meanwhile, in Final Fantasy XIV, I feel like the devs, instead of trying to force their way of how they want the game to be played onto players, they watch how players play, or they, maybe they probably play themselves, and they work with that. 
They go with the flow. They don't go against the, the flow. They go with it. And if players have a huge backlash against something, like one time we had uh, ran we had gear randomly rolling for very high stats in Diadem back in the day, and nobody liked it. It was basically like Titan forging in fourteen. Everybody got mad, and so they got rid of it just like that. They listened to the backlash and they said, oh, you don't like that? Okay, let's get rid of it. You know, like they, or if, if something happens that makes players upset in 14, like if when the time that people's butts got nerfed, uh, they will say, oops, that was our mistake. We, they'll tell us immediately what's going on, why it happened, and how they're going to fix it to make everybody happy. It's not like this war at all. We feel like they're working for us, not against us, which they should be working for us because we're the ones paying. It's just so refreshing to feel like the devs have my back, the devs care, and the devs um, just want us all to have fun. Next up, the game balance and uh, job viability. My god, what a <laughs> breath of fresh air it has been in Final Fantasy XIV for every time a new player comes in my stream and asks, you know, what is the OP job or what is the underpower job, I can just say, uh, none. Go like play a job and be good at it and then you will be viable this is one that uh <sighs> y'all it's so bad over there and well like i i don't think they know how bad it is they're so used to it they're so used to the job balance being so so bad the jobs being so imbalanced that let me show you something i found okay this is a spreadsheet that someone made and it says the mythic spec power history percent above or below average what these people did is they looked at every single class and spec in the game and they looked at the how on average how well did it perform in each expansion over the years so that you can maybe take a safe bet you can pick a safe job or spec that's probably not going to be underpowered and the next expansion, survival, way at the bottom. So that's not been a very well balanced spec. So you should probably not pick that one. And here's fire mage. Well, that's probably safe because that one's usually like pretty strong. That's usually pretty good. Like this is not normal. This is not how I, this is not how you're supposed to play the game. You're supposed to just pick the one you think is cool. Trying to place your bets on what spec is going to be performing normally i'm speechless and all i can do is you know thank my lucky stars that in final Fantasy 14 they actually you know balance their game next up music so often you'll see me on stream doing a trial or a raid and i'm like rocking out and i'm singing while i am doing the trial and that's hey that can add a whole nother level of difficulty to try to do the mechanics properly while singing and learning the lyrics <laughs> to the songs god bless soken for your incredible work on the music in this game next the complexity of jobs and rotation flow so probably uh, it's kind of difficult to compare these two because the games operate very differently with very different feeling GCDs, but all the Dobbs in 14 have their own unique, like they all feel very unique to play. They all feel different and they all have this complexity. I think even the most simple jobs in Final Fantasy 14, like Dancer or Red Mage, have more going on than a lot of jobs in World of Warcraft. In World of Warcraft, a lot of jobs have a priority system with doing pressing your different buttons. But in Final Fantasy 14, it's more like, okay, here's the first part, now here's the second part, and here's the third part, and here's how they all link together. The rotation flow that you have blends in beautifully with the encounter design. You might find that on many different jobs, uh, your abilities that you need for certain mechanics are coming up at an exactly right time. It just feels like all the stars have aligned and you are doing everything right. So yeah, feels great to play and it feels great to play in a boss encounter gear. This is a big one. Collecting beautiful gear in Final Fantasy XIV will ruin your appreciation of gear in WoW. Like you will not be able to enjoy robes in WoW ever again after you play Final Fantasy XIV because in WoW, pants and robes and stuff are flat textures that are look like a lot of them are just spray painted on and all the beautiful hand painted textures in the world can't change that. I know in, in more recent pieces of gear in WoW, they have added some more 3D elements, but the limitations are still quite obvious. The Covenant gear that they've shown, you can see these robes still look like robes always, always have.
you get real spoiled on all the various flowing robes and all the different ways that a robe can hang off your character and be cut all these different ways. It's just, there, there's no comparison. Fantasy 14 gear is a million trillion times better. I only wish collecting it was as easy. Next up, community. So Fantasy 14 is well known for having a very nice and friendly community, though that's not to say that it's perfect. I mean, there's a fair share of nasty people in it, like in any community. I can't believe I have to keep saying that. Obviously, there's no avoiding that since we live on Earth. So yeah, those people will always exist, unfortunately. But uh, I do think that your odds of running into friendly people is probably higher than it is in World of Warcraft. Just people feel cared for. They feel listened to. They, they don't feel a lot of bitterness about their jobs being imbalanced. Other things that I've already talked about so far. Generally, people being happy with the game, I think, often translates into them being happy with each other. Next, transportation. Oh, God. <laughs> so being able to just click on an etherite and show up where you want it to be is so much better than hopping on a griffin or a wyvern or whatever and uh, just uh, walking away and <laughs> like go do something else, make some tea or something while you wait to finally get where you need to go or play a mage or like be thinking, okay, well, if I teleport to Dalaran, then I can use the Dalaran portal and then the portal is going to take me to this other portal. What a mess. It's so much better just teleport straight to where you're headed. Next, the reputation grinds, I feel, are much, much better in Final Fantasy XIV. We have beast tribe reputations that you can try to grind for, but the grind is not too bad, and, and it usually involves a series of quests where you will get to know more about that beast tribe and has a little story to it and the story can often be very very good like i love the pixie beast tribe story and i love the kitari beast tribe story and now i'm working on the dwarf one which is very nice as well uh, so the process of getting reputation is really fun i look forward to doing pixie beast tribe quests um, every day so yeah um it's not a huge pain in the butt it's not like running around doing world quests till you're so sick of them you just wish you didn't have to get <laughs> exalted on this character much more enjoyable reputation process for sure for sure next uh all jobs on one character oh yeah this is the one that's gonna make it impossible for you to go back <laughs> to world of warcraft this is the one that's gonna keep you here no logging off to get on a new character and also uh, no jobs that are locked to any one race. So you can pick any race and play all the jobs and you won't be worse at a certain class or job because you picked the race that's not optimal for that class. Don't have to worry about that. Hey, uh, <laughs> you can't have imbalanced racials if you don't have racials. Next, uh, obviously bunny girls. Uh, I don't know why I threw, that. threw this in here with no additional comment. <laughs> Just it's got to be on here, clearly. Okay, next. <laughs> Character customization and uniqueness. Far more options. Uh, in Final Fantasy XIV, you have to customize your character. Even after all of the new customization, they're adding in Shadowlands, which is great. I'm glad that they're adding all of that customization. You just have so many more hair colors to choose from, so many more eye colors, so many more skin colors, not to mention all of the, the tattoos and the facial uh, features and the face paint and makeup and all that stuff. Also, we have the sub races, which can have a different color palette, so maybe slightly different uh, facial features too. There's a lot more to make yourself look different. Next, you have much better looking animations and battle effects. Like the emotes look so good. Cool like idle poses, depending on maybe on your job that you're using or uh, your race, like racial idle poses are really cool. You have different facial expressions and uh, the combat animations are amazing. And uh, I guess this kind of dovetails with the next one that I wanted to bring up, which is G-Pose. G pose. So <laughs> you do a combat animation and then you can go to G pose and you can look at it really closely. Really gives the player a chance to fully appreciate the hard work of the devs that created that animation and all those spell effects and everything. Next up, crafting and gathering professions. So in Final Fantasy XIV, those professions really function just like their own jobs, they have a ton more content, they have their own end game, and they get more and more content every day, <laughs> every patch it seems, with Ishgard Restoration providing a ton of stuff for crafters and gatherers. So if you like crafting and gathering, 
you are never going to run out of stuff to do, I, I feel, in Final Fantasy XIV. And uh, crafting is not just pressing one button. It is pretty involved. And you're going to be thinking about what you're doing, and there's a level of mastery to be achieved in crafting and uh, in gathering, too. So Final Fantasy XIV is, uh, you know, with a couple of random exceptions because this is normal for there occasionally be bugs in a video game for the most part it's quite bug free and i don't really experience major glitches or bugs or any problems like that in the game ever um they handle that because they do all the qa themselves and uh they do it well there's no ptr <laughs> there is no beta there's no alpha there's no players doing qa work and bug reports we can all enjoy the story on the day it launches together and we don't have to work qa for square enix because they're a multi-billion dollar company that's perfectly capable of <laughs> paying people to do qa and balancing the game uh, without players help so yeah no salt there. What are some ways that you think Final Fantasy XIV is better than World of Warcraft? Actually, it's incredible that Final Fantasy XIV does so many things better than World of Warcraft when it is so much younger as an MMO compared to World of Warcraft and came from such a horrible, horrible launch. Like, the progress that it's made and the strength of it as an MMO in such a short time is pretty remarkable. And the fact that it can stand toe to toe against World of Warcraft and uh, you know come out ahead in, in so many cases is really a testament to Yoshida and the dev team. So what do you think? Uh, is there anything that you think Call of Duty 14 does better than World of Warcraft? Let me know in the comment section down below. If you like this video, please consider supporting the channel on Patreon or on Twitch. You can also support the channel for free by clicking the subscribe button or by sharing this video with your fellow warriors of darkness. Thanks again so much for watching and I'll see you next time. Bye.